Hello and welcome to another Scardcast mini report. Today we have a small band of Dark Eldar facing off against a small band of Corsairs on the brand new Table War Frontline Gaming Fat Mat at Black Knight Games. Looking forward to this small little skirmish. Let's begin. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the report. So, two units of Corsairs, piloted by me. Um, they're in the back there. I'm teaching someone how to play today, so the Dark Eldar, the other force, and they have deployed a unit of witches with an Archon, some Cavalite Warriors, and a sneaky unit of Mandrakes that has snuck behind there. There are three objectives on the board, and the Dark Eldar are going first. It is not Night Fight, turn one. And let's see, at the end of the game, what happens. Let's move on to Dark Eldar, turn one. The Cabalite Warriors moved through the craggy outcrop and blasted the unit with the Prince, with their splinter fire, putting one wound on the Prince, but all the other Corsairs were fine. The Witches and the Archon have hidden behind cover to come back later in the game to do some damage and the Mandrakes bursting out of their infiltrated position have opened fire on these Corsairs, killing one, and the Soul Blaze has dissipated. So now it is turn for the Corsairs to do some damage as well. Turn one, Corsairs. We have the Corsairs with the Prince move, run, and then jetpack move closer to the Dark Eldar lines. And we have this Corsair unit move up, Shoot, do about seven wounds to the Mandrakes, but their Shrouded and stuff save them from the damage. Then they use their Reckless Abandon move to move back, and then the Jetpack move to move across to get them behind some cover, because those AP4 Bale Blasts will make short work of them in the open. So we're moving on to Dark Eldar, turn two. We have the Mandrakes move across and kill one more of the Corsairs and the um, they, did, they did not fail their morale test, they held. Whereas these Corsairs here got blasted by some rapid firing splinter rifles and one Corsair bent over with poison scything through his veins. While the witches and the Archons stay back ready to counterattack once they have gone into the Cabalite Warriors. We're moving on to Corsairs, turn two. We had the Prince and his unit charge in, kill three of the models with a flamer, and then jumping into combat, a couple of them died using their jetpacks as they jumped into the terrain. And now that is a tied combat. Nobody died in that combat, which means the witches will come and avenge their brethren. In the meantime, the Mandrakes still back here, while these Corsairs have hidden as well as they can to prevent any damage. Moving on to Dark Eldar, turn three. And the Dark Eldar have been swift in their damage and destruction. The Mandrakes moved across, shot into the Corsairs, killing two out of three. The last surviving member fled the battlefield. So they have secured this flank with flame and shadow and death. In the combat, the Feel No Pains from the Dark Eldar have been fantastic and they have survived all odds. They did lose combat, but passed their morale check. With the Witches having failed combat, we're now moving on to Corsair turn three. And the Corsairs are locked in deadly melee, while the Witches are ready to pounce on them at a moment's notice. Moving on to turn three. The Corsairs finally cut down the last Cabalite warrior and have consolidated three inches away from the howling gladiatorial combatants that are now fueled by pain and have furious charge, while the Mandrakes in the back distance will probably sit on that objective or move towards this part of the battlefield to support the Archon in his quest to subdue the Corsair Prince. Moving on to Dark Eldar, turn four. Dark Eldar have pulled back and ran back into cover while the Mandrakes have pulled forward to put some pressure and surround the Prince of the Corsairs. 
We're moving on to Corsair turn four, and we have a conundrum. What will the Corsair Prince do? The Corsair Prince decides not to take the bait from the Dark Eldar and has moved and ran and then jet thrusted all the way across to the center of the battlefield out of the line of sight of the Mandrakes. But putting pressure now on both of the Dark Eldar units, moving into turn five, which could be the end of the game. We have the Mandrakes pull back and capture that objective uh, to see if it ends on turn five. We also had the Witches botch their terrain roll, but run far enough to get within objective one with the Archon. So going on to turn five, we have a Corsair Reaver band with a Prince that will probably try and take on the Witches in an epic final clash to this small little skirmish game. Corsairs jump up, kill two witches with shooting that increased the charge range, which was my mistake, and I rolled a 9 when I needed a 10 to charge, but the Overwatch pistols put one more wound onto my Corsair Prince, and now they're stuck in the open. We're going to roll a dice to see if the game continues on to turn 6. On a 3+, plus, the game continues. The game continues on to turn six. These guys are so dead. A plasma grenade from the Archon swiftly makes short work of the Prince and one of the Reavers. The only Reaver left was the Flamer. The Witches charged through the Wall of Death. One wound was put on the Archon. One Witch died, but then the Archon made short work in close combat of the surviving Reaver. It is a dark Eldar victory, and the Corsairs are no more on the battlefield. This is a really fun little skirmish game, it's just a little get to learn how to play Warhammer 40,000 game. With a so make sure you like, subscribe, comment down below, check out all the links. We're on a quest to hit 8,000 subscribers. We're almost there, so make sure that you share the video. Thanks to all the patrons to make this possible and stay tuned for a small tactical corner on the game itself because even though it was a small game, it was a very tactical game and it was a lot of fun on both sides. This is Skari, your host, signing out till next time. Thanks a lot for watching and once again, check out Frontline Gaming for the really cool fat mats. This is awesome, it brings the table to life. Skari out. We had a little skirmish to get a new player into the game. I let them play with my Dark Elder while I used some Corsairs. Now, of course, I wasn't really worried about points, but I wanted to touch a little bit about uh, teaching people the game. When teaching the people the game, you want to um, convey a sense of being able to achieve uh, the mission parameters, but at the same time, give them tactical choices. Um, units that allow for close combat, units that allow for shooting, and um, you want to try and avoid as many special rules or war gear as possible, such as psychers, tanks, things like that. You know, even things like the Corsair Prince and the Archon um, did not have any special gear whatsoever. It was really nice to see just a small little battle between a few units and it became a very tactical game with movement and little maneuvers that really became important. Now there was some incredible rolling uh, with some of the Dark Eldar not failing any feel no pain saves which then really put the Corsair Prince and his uh, Reavers out of position even with their highly mobile jump troops. Now the Mandrakes of course were incredibly powerful in this small point environment with stealth and shrouded and with AP4 um, shooting weapons that could also you know get some extra casualties with the Soul Blaze special rule. So all in all it was a really fun game and sometimes toning it down and, and having a smaller battle can really be um, refreshing to the veteran when you're playing the game itself.
Uh, the game was played on brand new fat mat, which looks absolutely fantastic. And I highly recommend the product. And I hope you're having a great holiday season. And here goes to 2016. Scary out.